In the art market, patrons enable artists and galleries by buying art and supporting artists' careers. This is the famous Skull Auction in 1973, in which foremost pop art collectors Robert and Ethel Skull sold off 50 works from their collection. You need me flowers. That's Robert Rauschenberg, shoving Robert Skull after the collector sold several of the artist's works. I've been working my ass off for you to make that profit. All the artists got upset at this bad collector selling stuff for like $100,000 that he paid one or 2000 for. How about yours that you're going to sell now? I've been working for you too. We work for each other. Without realizing that now they were going to become wealthy themselves. You buy the next one, okay? Why At not? Prices, you buy the next one. <laughs> this kind of thing hadn't really happened before. It's a key moment in understanding how patronage relates to the market today. This is one kind of patronage. Here's another. The model of backing otherwise impossible ideas is still alive and well. I just put all my money into production more than into collecting. But is it still patronage when collectors are bidding up prices at auction, influencing museum tastes, and buying enough quantity to control market value? We support these artists by promoting them, by buying them at auction. You could say it's a way of controlling it. The history of art patronage can be traced back through the Egyptians, the Greeks, the Middle Ages, and of course the Renaissance where we're first presented with the idea of artists as genius requiring financial backing to create personal visions. When you're spending time with artists, it also stimulates your thinking and creativity. This is the most famous painting of all time, likely commissioned by a patron of some kind. Rich people have been getting their portraits painted for years. Bob Skull commissioned Warhol's first portrait of his wife Ethel 36 times. Here's another famous art collecting couple. The only rules we had were they had to be affordable and we had to be able to fit it in our apartment. Not everybody does it for the love. The best investments we've ever made are all the artists I absolutely loathe. There are the social benefits. Sometimes collectors who collect art principally for social reasons are dismissed as being less serious than others. It's fun. Going to Venice and saying, I got my Mark Bradford is fun but some of the largest and best collections of art. They love showing it off. They love entertaining museum groups in their home or at their foundation. Bob and Ethel Skull collected for multiple reasons. It's all true, he said. I'd rather use art to climb than anything else. I think collectors are much more powerful today than ever before because they actually spend the money on the inventory. When a patron donates or commissions work to a museum, it can add value to an artist's market. The problem with that is, there's no guarantee it'll be shown much if ever. We don't want just to collect art and have it in storage. We want to share it. The way to keep the collection together is to establish your own private museum. The artists love us because they know once we acquire their art, we'll lend it anywhere they want us to lend it to. You determine what gets to be shown, when it gets to be shown, how it gets to be shown, in a way that no public museum will offer you. If there is not immediate return on investment, our society is not really ready for it, but it needs to be done. Perhaps patronage is at its best without economic results in sight. I am actually happy to see that some projects which seemed impossible in the beginning actually became uh, big successes. In the 20th century, you can track almost every decade with a great art movement. Cubism, real, data, conceptual, minimal, yada, yada, yada. Now we get to the 21st century, and well, what's the great art movement? And really, there isn't one except if you say the art market. Inside or outside that market, patronage can present itself in many different ways, and whatever motivates it doesn't necessarily make it good or bad. The portrait business isn't going anywhere, but if everybody's focused on turning a profit, we might not see another Sistine Chapel anytime soon. <laughs>